Hey everyone, Jenny here with Sipping Streams Tea Company. And today I wanted to do something a little different. For those of you who have no idea and have been watching, um, just watched this video and saw that it came up on the Sipping Streams um, Facebook page, we have actually been doing a private free five day intensive course in the Sipping Streams Tea Tribe. And a bunch of you might not know that I actually teach tea classes. My name is Jenny. I'm the owner and founder of Sipping Streams Tea Company, an 11 time international award winning tea company. We won first place at the World Tea Expo for the top tea infusionist competition. We have won many first places for our different teas that we source from around the world. And we have also won top three for our Alaskan fireweed blend, which we harvest, um, forage, and blend in house here locally in Fairbanks, Alaska. Yes, we are actually an internationally renowned tea company in Alaska. And I started my tea company 13 and a half years ago. For those of you who don't know my background and just think I'm a tea store, my background is actually in healthcare. My very first career was athletic training, which is sports medicine, also known as sports medicine. But I worked at a physical therapy clinic and I did emergency care, rehab, um, prevention for different athletes. And they didn't have to be just athletes. There were people who were in their 50s or 40s who had some sort of injury or a knee replacement or a shoulder um, surgery. And I would actually help um, a local orthopedic surgeon with those clients that came right out of surgery to take care of their bandages, take care of their wound care and give them immediate rehab. So my background actually is in the health industry and I used to be a medical professional. But then later on, my second career, I actually was a double major in college, was um, in education. I used to be a high school teacher and yes, I am still a physical education teacher, K through 12 certified. However, I don't practice that. But when I was a high school teacher, I taught all the math and science in the PE class. And I was the head of graphic design. And I, yes, I even taught a tea elective course for a whole semester. So for those of you who don't know me very well, my background is extensively in health and education. And that is where the passion of tea came from. I'm gonna just quickly hop in over here and see um, who is watching us from um, wherever you are in the world. This is also posted on Instagram. It is posted, hi Cassidy, thank you for joining us on Instagram. This is also posted on YouTube and we're also streaming it live right now on Facebook. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to write them down below. But first of all, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know what you're watch, where you're watching from and what you're drinking this evening for me. I'm actually drinking out of my thousand mile tea pint cup, but I'm drinking kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea beverage with probiotics in it. Oh, hi, Hannah Moore. She says she loves our tea. Thank you. Um, but I just felt like something light, refreshing, something good for my digestive system. And I, what, what better than having some kombucha? So um, also, in case you didn't know or have any idea, I just got some good news. And um, my book that I wrote two years ago became bestseller on Amazon. And it's The Essence of Tea, The Transformational Journey of a Tea Connoisseur. It talks about my history and how I got into tea. But more importantly, it talks about the health aspects of how tea physiologically works in your body and can transform you from the inside out. Not just in how it works with its components, but how it's incorporated with community, with mindset, with um, gratitude, in a number of ways that how it's more of a holistic approach of how tea works on the human body and how it actually worked for me. Because I was not a tea drinker until my last year of college and literally I only started drinking tea because it was the last resort of trying to save money besides just having a cup of water at the local coffee shop. It was literally the cheapest thing on the menu. I had to repay my student loans for my double major and I was going to start drinking whatever it was 
that saved me money versus my $5.28 beverage I had every day before then. So I wanted to save money and pay back my student loans, which all my student loans have been paid off for quite a while now. But um, I wrote this book about my tea journey. And if you notice here, this is the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis here. Hey, Stephanie Bass. Hey, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Those balmy sandwiches are absolutely amazing. So, um, and it talks about, you know, how tea has affected my family, how it's affected my well-being, how it's helped me with burnout and my immune system being shot, um, and how I've dealt with all the trauma that has happened to me through being a small business owner with no business background. So, um, anyways, this is a book that you could get on Amazon. It's also available on Kindle and has a local photograph of the Aurora Borealis with a teapot, which we actually made this tea. This is actually our glass teapot. We had shots along the Tanana River and um, at about like 20 degrees. So we we're trying to have the teapot not shatter. And it, it had to be done very delicately. And then also we had a state trooper who was like with his flashlight wondering what we we're doing on the ground, but we were actually taking pictures of the Aurora Borealis. And so he actually distracted us from the best shots because of his high beam lights that were on us and asking for our ID and everything like that. So actually we were not able to get the pinks and purples that we saw a lot of because he was chit chatting with my photographer about photography. And it was a little, you know, upsetting, but still we had a great picture for the cover of my book. So if you have any questions, I'll let me know. I have a bunch of questions here from the people who were in the five days of tea transformational challenge. So for those of you who don't know, we just finished up a five days of tea um, mini course, essentially, which is all about the health benefits of tea. It's about how to make tea, how to tell the quality of tea, what tea actually is. And we have that in our private Facebook group, the Sipping Streams Tea Tribe. Now, if you don't use Facebook, it's still available on our Sipping Streams YouTube channel, but will be deleted all the seven sessions. So we had five days of an intensive tea course, and then we had bonus sessions because you guys had literally hundreds of questions for me that I could not answer. So we had bonus sessions on Saturday and Sunday and this morning. So I figured, why not hop into the Sipping Streams Facebook page, the business page, and, you know, answer questions that you guys might have. So if you guys have any questions at all, write them down below, let me know, and we'll be able to cover some of those things too. If you're wanting to watch these videos and catch up, you're free to do so by joining the Sipping Streams Tea Tribe private Facebook group or go on to our Sipping Streams YouTube channel where they're all there until Tuesday night. Tuesday night, everything gets deleted. And no, I'm not kidding because this has happened before where someone said, man, I tried to take your tea class, but then all the videos just were like gone. I said, yes, I delete all of the videos. You've got five days to get yourself in gear, get up early in the morning with me and actually take some action in your life. And so that's why we have it as a transformational tea challenge because those people who took action, those of you watching on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, with me live have been able to get one-on-one -on -one me time. So one-on-one -on -one tea specialist time. Also, I've been doing replays at night, but today I didn't do a replay. I figured I'd answer some more questions because there's so many questions, so many good questions. So let me get on over here, write down in the chat what you're drinking tonight. Let me know, it doesn't have to be tea related. Um, and where you're watching from, I'm interested to know about where you are watching from, Cassidy. I don't really know where you're from, but write down in the chat where you're from. And I'll pull up these questions real quick. Okay, things that we have already recently covered were weight loss. We've covered nicotine addiction. We've covered allergy and arthritis. We had three special guests this weekend. Um, give them, um, give personal stories of their testimonies, with um, their health conditions, what they have done, and what they have learned from Sipping Streams Tea Company to help their ailments. Also, we've had a couple people also show up from our Sipping Streams subscription box to tell us what they have learned about tea, the value that they have gotten out of the subscription box program, which teaches you all about tea and what's, um, what the health benefits are, and also the history and how to um, 
taste tea like a professional and what makes all the different teas so different from each other. I'm going to pop on over here and check out some of the comments that we have going on right now. So um, one of the questions that I know we had recently was about, oh yes, yes. So there was somebody who was going through a lot and, and they wanted to know about kidney failure and dialysis. And actually in college, um, the year that my mom had lung cancer and that was from secondhand smoke. My father was a smoker when I was growing up and that was very unfortunate. My, my mother is perfectly fine and my father has quit smoking since then. So I'm, I'm very aware of, you know, people addicted to nicotine. My father smoked a carton of cigarettes a week. And if I hid his carton of cigarettes that he got from the store, he would just turn right around, go to the grocery store and buy another carton. He never knew that I actually hit it unless he's watching this video right now. But, you know, as a kid, I was like, well, I guess he's not going to stop smoking. So I just took the carton out of the shelf where I hid it and just put it back. So then he's like, oh, I have two cartons. I wonder where it came from. So I understand that nicotine is a very, very addictive substance and smoking causes um, unfortunate results for some people who have nothing to do with smoking other than their friends or families with them. But um, this one person had asked about dialysis very specifically um, because um, they, they were going through the end stages of kidney disease. And there are very sensitive things that they can drink and not drink. And that answer, and I had a friend in college the summer that my mom had cancer, um, who was on kidney dialysis and she was, you know, born with bad kidneys. She was only maybe 19 years old and she was at, on dialysis in Colorado Springs where we were for the summer at a leadership camp that we were both at. And unfortunately, because of the elevation, um, it was too hard on her kidneys. So she did have to leave. So with um, kidney failure, um, with dialysis and things like that, you have to be very careful of what you drink and, and it counteracting with medications that you're taking and also what your body is going through. So for the very sensitive topic of kidney failure and going through dialysis, you have to bring up anything that you are interested in taking or anything that someone suggests you taking to see if it's going to be hard on the kidneys because the kidneys is what's going to filter everything. That is where all the um, water is going to go through. That is how it gets filtered out of your system. And with dialysis and being on a machine, you know, it, it's a very sensitive thing. So I would first of all suggest drinking water, but you know, there is also so much water that you can drink. And so you also need to be careful with that um, guidance with your medical professional. Again, I am not a medical professional in kidneys. My background is sports medicine. I understand how the kidney works, but I am not his medical doctor. I would not recommend anything um, without the guidance of his doctor. And I would also recommend things that did not conflict with any of his medications. So it depends. Is he on warfarin? Is he on Coumadin? Is he not allowed to take vitamin K? Is he, you know, there's things like that counteract with medications like grapefruit. There's different things that will create a conflict of the half-life of medication or make a kidney work harder. So there's a lot of questions that I have before I can really give a good answer. So I would say water. And if you're wanting to drink tea, the tea isn't necessarily going to help you. Now, if he can't have vitamin K, the Camellia sinensis plant has vitamin K in it. It is a green leafy superfood plant. And so you need to be very careful about that. And when I say teas, I mean specifically the Camellia sinensis plant, the tea plant itself that makes white tea, green tea, oolong, black, and poor. But there's an herb called rooibos that is very, very powerful in bringing down inflammation and it is low in acid too. It's also caffeine free, so it will not dilate the blood vessels and um, cause more agitation or pressure for the kidneys. So 
if it's okay with the doctor to start drinking a small amount of rooibos to bring down some inflammation and to bring in some antioxidants into the body. Some of the antioxidants that are the same as the tea plant itself and some of them that are different than the tea plant, but just as powerful. Now, antioxidants is a very broad term. You can also use the word um, bio, um, oh, I just blanked, um, polyphenols. And polyphenols is just like a chain of different molecules which causes um, prevention of oxidation, which is cells being damaged. So that's a very scientific explanation but in the end, I would not recommend um, the tea plant, like white tea or green tea or anything like that, if he is on some sort of medication that should not be taken with the consumption of vitamin K. That's like in spinach, that's in kale, that's in seaweed, things like that. Vitamin K will also be in the Camellia sinensis plant. So rooibos, which is an herb grown in South Africa, only grown in South Africa, helps with fighting inflammation, bringing down inflammation as very low in acid, and it won't dilate the blood vessels. So hopefully that is something that the doctors would be okay about, and that is something you'll have to discuss with them. So I hope that helps answer your question. I'm sorry, there's not going to be a healing answer for that, but that is what I would suggest with the guidance of his medical professional. Now, we have some people watching from Palmer, Alaska, having ginger peach without at the appropriate weight so some of you have learned that there is actually an appropriate weight for tea and that it needs to be 2.5 grams per eight ounces of hot water okay this eight ounces oh eight ounces down here so 2.5 grams is what you weigh out per eight ounces of hot water then you can re-steep it up to four times depending on the quality of the tea now we also had people in the five days of tea challenge who were shocked absolutely shocked and surprised that their average tea bag, I don't know if I even have any average tea bags at home without disclosing what brands they are, hope to not offend anybody. You know, these average tea bags, if you rip them open, typically they do not have even one serving of tea. And then when you see how small the particles are, they are very fine. They are very low quality, even if they're herbal. Herbals can be of larger quality, larger um, cuts and sizes, better quality, better freshness. Just because it's not the tea plant itself does not mean it's okay to be the leftover pieces. You're wanting a good sheen. You want high essential oils in there. You want freshness, okay? We don't go to the store and want to spend a lot of money on wilted lettuce. We want to get vibrant, fresh, crisp lettuce when we go buy our produce. So why wouldn't you want the best quality of your dehydrated leaves or herbs? That would be in tea bags. Think about it like that. We do at Sipping Streams, I think my husband drank it all already, was the thousand mile tea and other of our loose leaf teas. They are made in these special pyramid tea bags, which um, actually have the full 2.5 grams and we make sure that the machine weighs them out correctly and there's enough space in the tea bag for it to expand and for the water to absorb the the um, tea leaves and so then the tea is um, releasing its flavor you don't want it too compact into a tight tea ball where the leaves can't open up and release its flavor into the liquid Stephanie Bass said, um, Republic of Tea took between two to three bags. My scale's not the correct one, so it's a guesstimate. A guesstimate. So, yeah, there you go, Stephanie Bass. Um, believe it or not, that's, that's the tea that I was talking about in my book. If you haven't read my book already, I talked about being horrified about the tea that I was spending a lot of money on, and that's the one that I first was awakened by the quality of my tea or the lack of quality of tea in my tea bag. We also have Arlene Farmer watching and she's drinking chamomile lavender today. We have um, other people from Fairbanks, Alaska who are popping in here too. Thank you so much for joining me. So let's get back to some of the other Q&A questions. Now, like I said, some of these questions are very, very, um, 
important to some people because they are going through these medical issues. And like our testimony on Sunday with Mary, who has been suffering from rheumatoid arthritis since she was 14 years old and has had recent immediate effects from the suggestions that I've told her about and what she's learned about in our courses on tea has absolutely shocked her medical professionals where they're like, what? What, what are you drinking? And they're asking all these questions because doctors are not necessarily herbalists. Doctors are not necessarily certified tea specialists like I am. Now, I'm a certified tea specialist, but I'm not an herbalist. I will tell you what I know and what I've read the research on. And my passion is actually learning about the research, the actual um, peer-reviewed case studies on tea, and then understanding the physiology and the environmental factors, the, of the subjects and the demographics, um, how they were treated, um, what their lifestyles were, all the different variables in the scientific research is actually what I'm very interested in. And that's how I got interested in tea. And that's what I wrote about in my book, my interest of the science and research, and then integrating it with our everyday culture for prevention and for maintenance and for healing. And looking at it from a very holistic approach. I'm Chinese, I was born in Hong Kong. My grandmother who um, was lived in Hong Kong, she was known as like the local medicine woman in the area. Now, I didn't learn any of those things from her, unfortunately, because she passed when I was nine years old from a very aggressive form of skin cancer. So cancer does run in my family. I honestly don't drink tea because I'm wanting to prevent cancer. I honestly drink tea because the more I learned about tea, the more I realized that tea actually tastes good, okay? I've been a coffee drinker since I was five years old and tea, good tea tastes amazing. And there's a plethora of flavor choices you can get. And the more you learn about tea, the more you feel good about yourself, like literally like more energy, less pain, less inflammation. It deals with certain things right now that you can combat. And that's why I started my tea company. But then more so, I started the su subscription box experience where people can meet with me every week and I send them four different teas and they learn all about those health benefits. And some of them are teas that we don't even sell at Sipping Streams. They are such a rare tea, a limited supply of them. We don't even sell them in the store because we do not have enough supply. And so the subscription box is this exclusive group of people who love tea or are interested in learning more about tea and how to implement it in their everyday lives. In fact, in fact, this last five day tea challenge, we had people learn how to make specialty tea drinks like iced teas ice cream floats, other things like that, kind of fun stuff, maybe not the healthiest. And I also taught people how to bake with tea. And we made a chocolate um, black tea cardamom cupcake, which is also not quite very healthy, but you can substitute things in it. And I also taught them how to grill with tea. And if you saw the video of my husband, Brian, eating the pork chops that were marinated with the black tea, and I know from experimentation like six years ago, now I do cook with tea because it tenderizes the meat. It makes it so moist and the tea penetrates the fibers of the meat with its, um, its tannins. And so I was like, I used it as a rub. I just taught about this and I put um, ground cardamom in it too with the different spices. You can get the recipe if you're in the tea challenge. And, um, and if you're in our subscription box group, you will also get all those recipes too. But um, he was like, this is literally the most tender pork I've ever had. It was pork loin, okay? It's easy to over barbecue pork loin and it was just like falling off. I literally just stuck it outside in the propane grill. I thought I accidentally burned it because it was a little charred and the grill kept smoking. Um, but it was like so crispy, like a steak on the outside and the inside was perfectly moist. It was crazy good. It literally was the best pork chop I've ever had. Too. Sorry, dad. My parents are professional chefs. He's going to have to try one of those pork chops when he gets here to Alaska. But okay. 
on with some more questions. Woohoo! Yeah, watching from South Carolina. Elaine is watching from South Carolina. Um, we have another person who said they've been just diagnosed with um, cirrhotic arthritis and fibromyalgia. I have a lot of pain from inflammation. I'd love to look up your book. Is it available online? Yes, it is available online. Just look up um, The Essence of Tea on Amazon and you can get it there. Um, you can also come into our store if you're in Fairbanks, Alaska, and um, it will talk about rooibos and how it's so powerful for inflammation. Um, and like I said, we had um, Mary's talk yesterday about the three different teas that she uses in um, helping her with her RA. And now that her RA is so bad, her rheumatoid arthritis has already attacked you know, all of her her joints, now they're attacking different parts of her body and how she's used dragon well, how she's used rooibos, and how she's used yerba mate to instantly bring her healing and relief from pain that she hasn't felt relief in so long. She goes to doctors all the time, and these are things that she gave out in her testimonial. Mary Crook, and so you can write her at any time, but if you're interested in learning more about tea, we have a closed door special Zoom session tomorrow at 4 p.m. Alaska Standard Time. So Donna, if you're watching, go ahead and message me, message Sipping Streams, or, or message me, Jenny De. my last name's right here, T-S-E, I don't know if you can see it, T-S-E and message me and I can send you the Zoom link for our closed door session that will talk all about um, the Sipping Stream subscription box group and um, what we do in there, what we learn, how people's lives are being transformed. But um, yes, you can find it on Amazon. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks for helping her out there. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. Um, anyways, so on to another question. Uh, and feel free to write any of your questions down here. Um, will tea release its goodness in oils for making a salve, or would you grind it to dry it and then add it in? Oh, I know Stephanie has been experimenting with some salves, and pretty soon we're going to have some amazing rooibos lip balm that's made from one of our subscription members that we'll be selling very shortly. Um, I'm pretty excited about that mostly because she has a lot of problems with um, chapped lips and, and inflammation. And rooibos is something you can put right on your skin. It's so healing, just like the tea itself, the wet tea leaves itself, and it will be absorbed instantly onto the skin. So to answer your question, Stephanie, about, you know, making salves and things like that, it all just depends what it is. As long as the essential oils are potent and you have a medium for the the herbs or whatever it is, or tea or green tea like matcha would be very potent because it'd be the whole pure meat that is half a micron fine of a powder, smaller than a smoke particle, finer than makeup powder. Anyways, matcha, you don't need to infuse that at all. You would just put it right on and it would work right away. Um, but things like that are much hardier, more fibrous, you might have to soak them or cook them um, at low temperature of whatever it is to not water down the solution of the liqueur. Remember the liqueur, the liquid here, is also the medium of how those essential oils will be transported. So think about your ratios there. Um, we also have made different things like that before, and I've experimented with things like that since I was a little kid because I started selling at the farmer's market here in Fairbanks, Alaska, since I was nine years old. And when I was selling my mom's specialized Chinese vegetables, she would also let me have like a little section of the table to do like my little arts and crafts and whatever I was interested in. So, um, so I am experienced with a little bit of different ointments and salves, especially knowing from in Chinese medicine, you know, different tinctures and extracts of it. You just have to think about how the essential oils will be preserved the best. Like we talk about in drinking tea for medicine. Hey, everyone on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us. Like I mentioned before, steeping tea like medicine is when you make your hot tea is to make sure it's covered because all that steam is transporting essential oils that are evaporating into the air around you and you are no longer drinking them. So when you chop them in and the tea cools down, you'll see some condensation and those are the essential oils being helped um, trapped in the liqueur still, in the liquid. Excuse me. 
I gotta stay hydrated, you know. Another question is eyes. What kind of tea is good for eyes? Well, first of all, first of all, the tea plant itself has very, very powerful antioxidants in it. So what exactly are you talking about when you say eyes? Is it because of sun damage? Is it because of cataracts? Is it because of other damage over time, wear and tear essentially, aging, things like that, or damage to um, the muscles because of what you're doing, like maybe you're doing something where you have to look a lot, you're straining your eyes, the lighting, so many different factors. I mean, I wear glasses, I have glasses. I usually wear contacts. I usually do not wear sunglasses, so I'm pretty sure I need to take care of my eyes a lot better. But when I'm wearing glasses, I do not have prescription sunglasses. So I prefer to wear contacts, but I've been out of contacts for a while. So when I wear contacts, I do wear sunglasses, but I did not get in the habit of wearing sunglasses until after I was in college. So I never knew the benefit of sunglasses when I was a kid. I never noticed a difference. The sun never really bothered me. But now that my family, like my father has had his, um, his uh, lenses replaced, he's always wearing sunglasses, you know, seeing cataracts in my dog's eyes and things like that. When you say um, what tea is good for the eyes, you could say almost any tea that will help with regeneration of cells and also prevention of damage of over time. So when we talk about the tea plant itself, we're talking about ECGC, which is an antioxidant that protects any cell in your body. Any cell, eye cell, nose cell, heart cell, gut cell, any kind of cell in your body. And that shield prevents it from being damaged by UV rays, by um, inflammation, um, by, you know, so whatever it happens, like that you have eye damage, because there's so many different things about your eyes. Are you talking about, you know, focus, seeing clearly or something like that? And then you have to look at the root cause of why you do not see clearly or focus or whatever it is. There are, so, eyes are very, very complicated. In fact, that's one of the one of the injuries I never want to deal with is the eyes because it is very dangerous for somebody to possibly be blind for the rest of their lives. So whenever it had to do with somebody and they got hit in the eye with a football or something like that, I was always very, very nervous on how I dealt with that person because I knew how extreme um, injuries to the eye could be without the person even realizing it. I mean, People have torn retinas and don't even know they're torn. And they could possibly be damaged for the rest of their life and blind. So, you know, it's that and teeth, I feel are like the two things that I am so cautious about when I see those types of injuries because there can be some major implications that cannot be reversed. So the tea plant itself has ECGC. So white tea, green tea, oolong, black, and poor. Any of those could work for helping prevention of free radicals or UV damage or things like that. But again, make sure you are taking care of your eyes the best that you can, first of all. And then second of all, if you're talking about, you know, cellular growth and maturity and, and regenerating healthy cells, vitamin C. Vitamin C is going to be very, very powerful in helping with those, um, those issues of damage to the eyes, um, overuse, um, degeneration of the eyes, things like that. So things that have a lot of vitamin C are rose hips, um, orange peels, lemon peels, hibiscus, and all of those things are in the combination of our Midnight Sun Herbal Blend. It is very, very high in vitamin C. So those are two recommendations that I would make for people who have questions about eye care. Now, if you have any questions at all, write them down below. Donna, hopefully I answered your question about arthritis and fibromyalgia. Um, just a little bit. And again, that will have to do with the root cause and fibromyalgia is unfortunately, you know, a very debilitating thing. So diet is very also important. External factors, your stress, um, certain anxieties. And, you know, when we have, when we're sick, one of the worst things we can do is panic. 
you know, we do need to stay calm because our mindset is very, very powerful in controlling the rest of the levels of our body system. We do want to take things that keep us healthy and things that make us healthy. So, and to alleviate the pain, but there's so many things. It's like a chain reaction. Things like arthritis and fibromyalgia. It is a chain reaction. Oh, and your malate will be good for fibromyalgia because it has to do with the nervous system also. So that's another one, your mate that you'll want to have. Um, if there's any questions, write them down. I'm here to answer all of your, your questions that you have for me today. I'm going to check on this other one. So take a moment, write down your questions. We have some fun questions now. Now, this time during the five days of tea, I really wanted to have a lot of fun. I know I can get super scientific, and I know that we can really get down on ourselves and hopefully find some answers and take some action to our lives and, and make the positive changes that we want to see. We have to choose to actively invest, invest in ourselves, invest in actions, not only invest in ourselves, but to do the work to make changes in our lives. I mean, like Emily, she was amazing because Emily came to us because she just saw um, you know, that we were going to have this free tea class and it was the moon boosting tea workshop. And she's like, well, I got to pay attention to this because these people could be full of fluff. And you know what? She challenged us. She took action, tried it out on herself and it totally worked. It totally worked for her. So, you know, you do need to invest in yourself in deciding to make changes in your life to decide to read a book like, you know, Donna, that you're interested in reading, to decide to try something out, but to be smart about it, to be listening to the advice of your medical professionals if you have a medical problem, to make observations and to follow through, to follow through. And that's why the subscription box is such a powerful program because it's not just a subscription of four different teas that show up in the mail. It is four different teas to help you along your tea journey for more arsenal. I mean, not only that, you get all of the tea classes we've ever taught before. You get to have access to our exclusive university program that has all the classes that we talk about in this book that are over $250 a class and all the teachings that I've ever done and all of our internal teachings that we use for our tea artisans. Yes, all of my tea artisans have homework and tests and they go through an extensive training program to be able to answer most of your questions. Now they don't have a medical degree. They do not have a teaching certificate, but they have me and they have me to help them along their personal tea journey to be able to spread the love and the knowledge and help people transform lives to transform our community lives, our friends and family. And knowledge is very powerful. And if we keep that to ourselves, it's kind of selfish. So it's totally okay to be vulnerable and to make sure that um, we're doing the best that we can to be honest and not misleading. And that's exactly what you get from the subscription program is me, community of other people who have different things than me and have gone through what I have suggested and have seen transformational changes in their lives, which is just crazy. It just blows me away all the time, but it's so encouraging. I don't know why it blows me away because I know it works and I've seen the research, but when you meet the person face to face on the Zoom call and they're telling you exactly what they did and it worked, I'm just like, whoa, you're real. You know, you're real, you're a real person and you're suffering through all that and it worked for you. Oh my gosh, I need to tell other people. I am going to tell some other people that it worked for you. I hope you don't mind, you know, just being vulnerable in that situation. So a fun question that we have, and this is what I like to get into because it's summertime, you know, summertime's outside, it's warm again, all the snow is gone, thank goodness, is can I make tassans with fresh herbs from my garden? And if so, how? Well, tassans are so easy to do. So like sometimes Dr. Oz will recommend people to drink parsley tea because it helps with bloating. Well, have you ever thought on your plate from your fancy restaurant that there's parsley on there for a reason? In India, they're always taking their foods as digestives. They eat everything on their plate. 
because it's all there for a reason, not just for decoration. So when you have fresh parsley, it is to help you with your digestion. You should eat it off your plate, not just a garnish. Traditionally, it is there as a digestive. So when you're thinking about herbs from your garden, you can make them as an herbal tisson by drying them, air drying them, dehydrating them, however you want to preserve them. The point of drying tea leaves, the point of drying tea leaves is to preserve the tea, kind of like canning, right? So you can can our, our tomatoes and our zucchinis or when we freeze things. Well, traditionally, hundreds of years ago, drying is their way of preservation. They didn't have refrigerators everywhere. They didn't have freezers everywhere. They might have root cellars, but this was a way to dry a very, a very effective plant that could go a long ways and take up very little space. So yes, you can dry almost any herb in your garden if you like. You can even dry lettuce if you want to. But the thing is, you can rehydrate it as an herbal tisson or tea, but the best way to get 100% of the health benefits is, does anyone remember? Does anyone remember? Write it down below. What is the best way to get 100% of the health benefits of your infusion? Remember, it is not the broth that makes it 100% um, all the nutrients and components. It is the, write it, write it down. It's going to answer me. Let me take a sip. Yes, ding, 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 ding. It is consuming the whole pure thing, the pure leaf. So if you're wanting to make some mint tea, eat the mint. That's the best way to have it. If you want to dry it, you can do that too. You can mix it with different things. I pulled a bunch of dandelions out this weekend, and they were huge, huge dandelion roots. I was like, oh, I could have made dandelion tea, but my dogs actually like eating dandelion. So they're eating all the flowers and the leaves. And they're all very, very healthy for you. So, you know, you can mix it up with different things in your garden that are edible. Now, realize there are some plants out there that are not edible. You do not want to steep them into a tea because they will make you sick. Because if they're not edible, the broth will not be edible either. So there's all kinds of things that you can do, and it's almost fireweed season, so we'll be harvesting and foraging our fireweed for our Alaskan Arctic Bliss blend very, very soon. Now, another question we had from the same fun person is, I would like to learn more about the health benefits of tea and tassans. So where can I learn about them? Well, we have three classes that we offer on our website at sippingstreams.com. It's the essence of tea, which is all about professionally evaluating tea, the different types of tea, the five different types of tea, and what you're looking for and the taste and the nuances and, and how to steep it properly and how to make the best cup of tea and why you would make it in a certain vessel. It is a month long course. The Essence of Tea is a month long course and comes with all the supplies. You can sign up for that at sippingstreams.com. Or there's also the second class is Matcha Madness, which is all about the world of matcha, the Japanese tea ceremony, how matcha is processed, why is matcha so different? Why are there different grades of matcha? What do you mean it's supposed to be hand harvested and forced um, to starve of sunlight? You know, it's not instant ground up tea that makes it so powerful. So matcha is a very, very powerful beverage that is super, super potent. And so there's a whole month long class on matcha. Comes with all the matcha bowls, your matchas, your whisks, things like that. and four weeks of lessons that you can learn about it. And then there's kombucha culture, which I'm drinking a lot of my kombucha right now. Um, I actually have it sitting on my counter on continuous brew, um, and I'm always feeding the SCOBY. So if you're wanting to learn more about kombucha and the probiotic um, benefits of it, it's microbe, it's essentially microbiology sitting in your house. We also at Sipping Streams make our own kombucha. We're the first place in Fairbanks to commercially sell our kombucha by serving it and selling it, but our tea company specializes in all kinds of tea. So we are not a kombucha company. We are a tea company who also brews our own kombucha, which we're, oh my gosh, we have an amazing batch of kombucha right now. Let me tell you what, because it is so warm, and so now that puppy's going. And we're also working on sourdough starters right now, too. There's a lot of things we do at Sipping Streams that helps with health and wellness, digestion, well-being and things you can do at home to take care of yourself. 
So, you know, we even make our own um, sourdough starter. We make our own kits for our um, uh, scone mixes and tea cookie mixes. We just made a recent all natural dog birthday cake mix. I mean, it, it, it goes beyond tea, but it starts with tea and thinking about how we take things in naturally. Um, oh, now Arlene's drinking Imperial Tiquanian Oolong. Ooh, she's changed. Yeah, I had to change today too because I already drank a growler, a growler full of tea today. So, you know, I, I've already had a lot of tea and I was like, oh, my tea's um, no longer very um, tasty anymore. It tastes kind of like colored water, you know? So then I switched to kombucha because I was wanting something refreshing. Um, but those classes are offered on our website or if you're part of the Sipping Stream subscription box experience, you'll get the teas, you'll get the classes. We're going to be teaching how to grill with tea. Um, we already taught that in the five days of tea challenge. We also have tea cocktails, fun things that you can make. And of course, the health benefits and everything you want to learn about. Like I said, I have taught a tea class for a semester at a high school. I have also taught a semester long tea class at the university. I can teach probably years worth of tea classes and that's why the subscription program is so, so valuable because you get all access to me because you get continual learning, continual education, all these recipes, these fun things you can do with tea. Um, the history of tea, the horticulture of tea. So as per suggestion, we're going to be actually giving out some tea plants in the future, I don't know when yet, in one of the subscription boxes so people can learn how to grow their own tea or you could come with me on one of my tea tours. So this year, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we did not go on a tea tour, but our next tea tour will be to Kenya, Africa. So that got pushed back. So if you're interested in joining me and going to Kenya, picking tea leaves, seeing the tea plants grow in the field, learning about the people, the culture, the community, and, and this amazing beverage that just transforms the world because tea is the number one most consumed beverage next to water. Can you believe it? Water is the number one consumed beverage, that is tea. And tea is 99.9% .9 water anyways. So, um, anyways, I'll be leading a tea tour to Africa sometime next year. I'll work on the details of that because of everything that's going on. Don't know quite yet. It'll either be spring or fall. Um, but hopefully you can come with me. But if not, join the subscription box program. Because not only do you get the teas, not only do you get all access to the teachings, not only do you get virtual um, exclusive events and classes like cooking classes and recipes we don't give out to anybody else, not only that, you can earn your tea subscription for free because now we have an ambassador program for those people who are interested in the subscription box where if they share out their affiliate link to their friends and family, you get a, a check, a cut of that sale. So if you're interested in earning your tea subscription for free and you just share out the link, and let somebody know about what you learned about tea, you could essentially get your whole month's fee waived. And I just cut you a check at the end of the month. So if you're wanting to learn more about that, you will want to lock into your price this Tuesday. By the end of this Tuesday, the price is going up. The price is going up. So you want to sign up today for the Sipping Stream subscription box. And we've got a lot of people here right now who are part of the subscription box. Hopefully you're excited with us. And we're going into a private Zoom, a closed door private Zoom tomorrow. Just message me if you're interested in learning more, if you want to talk to other people who are a part of the subscription box, 4 p.m. Alaska Standard Time will not be in Facebook. It'll be in a private Zoom session if you're interested in joining. And you can ask all the questions you want about how you can learn more about tea. Not only learn more about tea, but drink the tea. Get the full on experience. Get the health benefits. Feel the effects right away. So if you want to be a part of that, message me right now, write it down, um, you know, or email me. You can email me also at Jenny at SippingStreams.com and you can get the link to that private Zoom session, that closed door session with people who are also having questions about, hmm, what is the subscription box really like? No, it's not just a box like, yay, tea's arriving. No, you don't need more tea. You need tea that's going to change your life.
That's what you need. You need a community who is positive and going through the same journey like you and learning amazing things. And you can talk to people in that group face to face on Zoom if you want and ask any questions you have. You can type them in. You can ask your questions verbally. We'll be doing this amazing session tomorrow before the price goes up on tomorrow night. So walk in right now your price and as a bonus, you get a special session with me, 15 minute session, if you pay the one year in full. If you pay one year in full, you are grandfathered and locked into that price, that subscription. But you also get two months for free. Two months for free. Save money, get a free consultation with me of whatever you wanna ask about, your heart's desire about tea, whatever you're going through, a wellness plan, whatever you want help with, you get one-on-one -on -one with me. And then you get immediately access to our Sipping Streams experience with all the teachings, all the classes, everything we've ever done. Even the Immune Boosting Tea Workshop will be on that website that you have your own login for that as long as you're in the subscription group. So who's excited with me? Who's excited to hop in the Zoom tomorrow? Put some thumbs up, send some hearts. I know Christina's super excited. She's a new member. We've got Cheryl, who's also a new member, and Misty, and um, Kendall, and uh, Katrina, and all these people who are super excited and possibly excited because they're going to get their subscription for free. All they have to do is let their friends and family know instead of going straight through us on the website, just click on their link, and you're helping your friends get an amazing transformational um, experience in their life in their health, in their well-being. So I will answer one more question. You got a question, write it down. I'll answer one more question. Okay, let's see here. Oh, this is a really good question. So I, like I said, my mom had cancer, my grandmother had cancer, that was her mother who had skin cancer, my mother had lung cancer, and I've actually been a guest speaker at the Cancer Center in Fairbanks before, and one person said, um, what types of tea would you um, recommend to help with the symptoms experienced during chemo? Now, you have to be careful with chemo. Chemo is chemicals, you know, um, reacting with your body, and so you're also on medication, and and so it really depends if you're on blood thinners, blood thickeners. So if you're on blood thinners or blood thickeners, do not take chamomile. It might be, um, at least not from sipping streams because our chamomile is extremely potent. So I don't want it to mess with your warfarin or their coumadin. So if you're not on warfarin or coumadin and you have chemo, then one of the safest things you can drink is, um, is rooibos. Again, I highly recommend rooibos. It's very, very powerful. It has caffeine in it. It helps with inflammation. I also recommend anything high in vitamin C to help with cellular regeneration, healing of cells because of the damage of chemo. Okay, chemo is important, if that's what's recommended for you, to get rid of the, the bad cancer cells that are causing major system problems. Okay, so if you're in chemo, I have nothing against people having chemo. Um, you you need to go through that if that's what your doctor highly recommends so you can live. But after that, after the chemo has also damaged some of the healthy cells, you need to have something that's going to give you good cellular regeneration, like things high in vitamin C, midnight sun herbal blend, hibiscus, rose hips, orange peels, lemon peels, anything high in vitamin C that does not cause does not cause inflammation. So there are foods that cause inflammation and things like sugar are going to cause inflammation also because of the molecule and how it reacts in your body with an excess of sugar. I don't even care if it's an excess of honey. Honey is still a form of sugar. An excess, excess of fruit. It everything in moderation. So do not do anything too gung-ho. Moderation is the best way to go. Balance is the way to go. And if you are allowed to take vitamin K, I highly recommend green tea because the same thing, it's going to protect the healthy cells from damage. You want your healthy cells still to be intact. So the Camellia sinensis plant will be white tea, green tea, oolong, black, or poor. Any of those are going to help 
prevent further damage to your body cells. And what's so powerful is that it is not picky. It is not discriminatory. It will go and bind to any cells in your body, your eyes, your hair, um, your heart, anything like that. Any cells that it can touch, it will go find it and hug it and say, okay, we're in this together. We can make it together. So that's some questions about for people who are going through symptoms of chemo. Now, if you're wanting it for like your taste to come back, that's going to take time, but those things will help you with those cells coming back, those taste buds coming back also. And hopefully um, you get some relief from that. Again, always seek medical advice from your actual medical professional. I am not your doctor. I'm just a certified case specialist with a background in sports medicine. And those are just my recommendations because they're safe and they don't contra, um, um, contradict anything else. They don't conflict. They're not a contraindication. Um, sorry if I'm using too much medical terminology. They are, for the most part, safe. And that's why I give you caveats in the situation of what you might be going through to make sure that it does not conflict with something else. I'm not a pharmacist by any means, but I know when you drink tea, it should just be tea, right? If you drink mint, it should be just mint, right? Not some weird chemicals in it. So be careful of your sources of where you get your ingredients from because sometimes they're stored in something like lead boxes, unfortunately. Several years ago, there was a bunch of mint that was recalled and there was lead in the mints and it had to do with the mint boxes. However, I did not have any of my teas recalled or any of my mint recalled because I know my sources and they are not stored in any metal at all. So um, just be careful of where you get your ingredients from. Have you thought about that before? Is there certain chemicals in the paper that's in the tea bag that's being soaked in boiling hot water? Have you thought about that before? That's why loose leaf tea is like so good for you because you can control exactly what you're taking if anything is leaching out into your hot water because typically teas are close to boiling if not boiling hot water, much hotter than coffee temperature usually. So think about those things. Oh my goodness, I've run out of time. Thank you so much, everyone who's been joining me here tonight, this evening. I thank you, thank you so much, all my Instagram people, my YouTube, my Facebook people. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. Now, don't forget, you can join us for that closed door um, session tomorrow at 4 p.m. Alaska Standard Time, but you need to message me. You need to write it down and let me know that you want the link because it's not just for anyone, it's just for people who are really interested with genuine questions about what you can learn about tea. I mean, we're doing our grilling and, and uh, cooking with tea classes this month. We also have this brand new grill and cooking tea set here with all the teas and the recipes and the cocktail set and everything like that which we're going to give one away for our first virtual tea party that starts this Thursday for the subscription box group. So hope you can join us in our virtual subscription box or our, our virtual tea party exclusive to our Sipping Stream subscription box members. And I will see you here if you're going to be in our Zoom at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone.